Art is an intrinsically violent and destructive phenomenon. As a result, it is logical to conclude that those who play active roles in military conflicts may be emotionally impacted by the significance of the events they have witnessed. These impacts tend to be negative and can even take on the form of post-traumatic stress disorder, or PTSD. This disorder is defined as being a serious psychological condition that occurs as a result of experiencing a traumatic event. Thus, individuals of all backgrounds and circumstances can develop PTSD, seeing as traumas can be constituted by many different scenarios. However, special consideration should be taken of service members who are at a greater risk of developing PTSD due to the fact that they are regularly put in dangerous situations in which they and those around them can be harmed. This high prevalence of PTSD among service members has become particularly relevant to the United States in recent times with the nation's military involvement in Afghanistan and Iraq. In fact, since 2001, over 2.5 million troops have been deployed to Iraq or Afghanistan, and PTSD rates related to these wars range from 8% to 20%, or 192,000 to 480,000 individuals. Therefore, in the aftermath of these wars, addressing combat-related PTSD should be of utmost importance, considering that this disorder has the potential to reduce the quality of life of thousands of Americans who have risked their physical and mental integrity to maintain the safety of the U.S. This inevitably raises the question, what is the optimal way to treat PTSD in American service members? A discussion of this topic through the psychological, historical, and futuristic lenses reveals that virtual reality exposure therapy, or VRET, is the optimal way to treat combat-related PTSD. When analyzing this topic through the psychological lens, we must first understand the types of events that may traumatize American service members and the symptoms that can arise as a result. Possible traumas include being exposed to severe combat in which buddies were killed or injured, having personally killed enemy combatants, and being exposed to life-threatening attacks. These events can reasonably impact a person's psyche, causing the emergence of a specific set of symptoms. Garsk assures that veterans with PTSD re-experience their trauma in the form of haunting invasive memories, nightmares, and flashbacks, and have sustained anticipatory anxiety about potential threats to life and live at all times. In this way, PTSD alters the veteran's sense of reality. It is logical to conclude that most people do not become terrorized as they go about their daily routines. However, those who suffer from PTSD may suddenly remember their trauma, whether that be shooting an enemy soldier or surviving a possibly fatal explosion, and may somehow believe that they are back in the place in which this event occurred, causing them a significant amount of distress. Arthur Schlesinger Jr., writing in The Historian as Participant, explains that playing the role of the eyewitness contributes to a veteran's ability to vividly recall traumas. He emphasizes that the eyewitness tends to preserve the felt texture of events. Therefore, because the American service member was personally involved in their trauma, they preserve the meaning of that event in their mind in a way that secondary sources might not. This leads to them constantly reliving it, which in turn alters their perception of what is real and what is just a memory. Now knowing the impacts of PTSD on the psyche, the nuances of this disorder must be understood in a historical context. Lila Abu Lugad emphasizes that many aspects of societies around the world cannot be understood without reference to the history in terms of which people live their lives. In applying this concept to PTSD, one finds that ignoring its historical relevance in such military conflicts as that of the Vietnam War in the 1970s, for example, would only provide a limited view of the disorder. Therefore, it is important to identify elements of past military conflicts, conflicts that are present today and still lead American service members to develop PTSD. One veteran says about the Vietnam War, every day you are threatened by something, either a mortar attack at night or you are getting sniped at. Scenarios like these, bearing a strong resemblance to those experienced by today's American service members, actually led to 30% of Vietnam, Vietnam veterans excuse me, to suffer from PTSD. This shows that combat-related PTSD in the United States is just as much of a problem now as it was in the past. The prevalence of this disorder is an issue that warrants efficacious treatment options as possible solutions. The optimal treatment, virtual reality exposure therapy, can be analyzed from the futuristic point of view. Before understanding VRET, one must first understand the basis of exposure therapy. Rejoin Gam of the Department of Psychology within the Madigan Army Medical Center explained that in this treatment, the patient verbally recounts their trauma multiple times. This essentially forces the patient to face their fear and realize that the event cannot physically hurt them because it is no longer a part of their current reality. VR comes into play when considering that it immerses the user in a computer-generated world through the inclusion of visual, tactile, and other sensory cues. VR can thus serve as an augmentation of exposure therapy by reconstructing the very environments in which patients have experienced trauma. 
One example of a virtually reconstructed traumatic environment is provided by Albert Rizzo, Director for Medical Virtual Reality at the Institute for Creative Technologies in support of Reger and GAM. He presents a program called Virtual Iraq, which, as you can see, realistically reconstructs the battlefields and life-learning situations present during the Iraq War. A program like this can be beneficial to patients with PTSD because it can allow them to more vibrantly recall elements of their trauma. This will make them more likely to recognize that it is just a past event, which in turn allows them to eliminate the fear associated with that event. VRT also presents itself to be a plausible solution. The highly customizable quality of this treatment demonstrates that the technology can be applied to create environments of specific wars for specific veterans who need this treatment, making its far-reaching future impacts possible. However, limitations do exist. Rothbaum, who is part of the Trauma and Anxiety Recovery Program at the Emory University School of Medicine, explains that, excuse me, explains that virtual, excuse me, explains that exposure therapy has been proven to have some of the highest rates of efficacy of all PTSD treatments. Excuse me. However, Najewitz of the Boston University School of Medicine counters Rothbaum by stating that despite having high success rates, virtual, um, excuse me, exposure therapies like virtual reality also have high dropout rates. She proposes the idea that patients may actually fear recalling traumatic events. Essentially, patients may drop out of exposure therapy because it requires them to continually re-examine their traumatic memories, which can obviously, or excuse me, understandably, cause feelings of discomfort too great to manage. Although this claim is meritorious, Rizzo refutes it by, by exclaiming that some of the aspects, some of the virtual aspects of virtual reality exposure therapy can eliminate the distressing aspect of it. This reasoning applies mostly to younger service members, like those, applied to, like those deployed to Iraq or Afghanistan who are more familiar with digital game technology, like those used in VRET. This technological feature of the treatment thus, makes, thus brings an aspect of comfort to it, which makes it much more palatable. Although many options logically exist to treat combat-related PTSD in American service members, the optimal treatment has identified itself to be virtual reality exposure therapy. The highly customizable quality and high efficacy rates associated with this treatment reveal that it can help American service members with their bout with trauma, thus and, and should thus be more widely implemented. Therefore, with VRT, service members can regain control of their real world. Thank you. Thank you. You'll, uh, you'll now be asked two defense questions. Your first question is, what information did you need before you began your research, and how did that information shape your research? Before I began my research, I really needed to understand the general concept of post-traumatic stress disorder. Through initial inquiry, I found out that many different types of events can cause PTSD, like being in a car, a car accident or having been sexually abused and being in a military conflict. When I started exploring the idea of being in a military conflict a little bit more, um, I realized that service members are actually at a greater risk of developing PTSD due to the fact that they are regularly in dangerous situations in which they can be harmed. So once I realized that service members are more susceptible to this disorder, um, this shaped my research because I decided to focus on this particular stakeholder because they were more relevant to the topic. Thank you. And your final question is, Please explain the level of certainty you have about your conclusion, solution, or recommendation. My level of certainty regarding um, virtual reality exposure therapy as a treatment for combat-related PTSD is relatively high. I came to my conclusion by synthesizing statistical evidence with um, a sound line of reasoning. For example, through research I learned that one of my sources, Rothbaum, reported that exposure therapy has some of the highest efficacy rates of all PTSD treatments. I then learned from another source, Reger and Gam, that virtual reality builds upon the principles that exposure therapy is built on. So I, I put these two things together and I realized that if virtual reality is just an extension of exposure therapy, VRET should have the same as or even higher rates of efficacy as the regular exposure therapy. So I feel fairly confident that it is accurate. Thank you very much. Good job.